Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. But you already know that, don't you? Because that's why you tuned in. So today I'm joined by Cam from West Yorkshire. He's returning after his debut of the other day. Uh, but first of all, I want to thank everybody for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment and sharing the videos. If you don't like them, don't share them. If you like them, share them and show some respect. But who cares if you don't? Over to you, Cam. How are you doing? I'm good, mate. How are you? I'm all right, mate. I'm I'm all right. I've been told I've got to sit up <laughs> and mm. uh, do videos set up by the powers that be. I said, well, why is that? Well, you look like a dosser laid on your bed. I said, well, I'm not at work, am I? I'm not in the office, sat up. Do what I want at home, kind of. This is like an this is extra footage for followers. Oh, you need to sit up. People are complaining. So I've sat up. I might lay down in a minute because I'm anti-establishment. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but do what you want, mate. Do what makes you comfortable, innit? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've just had. Uh, I've, I think I've got used to the month I've had in here. You know, cooped up two week with that virus, and then I couldn't go up to yeah. up there because uh, so there were a couple of girls up there who were a bit paranoid about. And workers, I suppose they don't want me bouncing about, do they? Because I'm a bit of a character up there. And if I've got a virus, or you can still have have it inside you, can't you? Or some, I suppose, can't you? They reckon, don't they? Somebody, a nurse told me that you can still get it, I suppose. I don't know. Is, does it linger in you? Well, that's what they're saying, aren't they? It can still be contagious, but I don't know. Mate. I don't know what to make of it, to be honest with you. So, but anyway, I'm uh, backfiring on all cylinders. Cylinder has been doing a bit of training this week, so I'm all right. I'm I'm happy. So, we're we're, we're, oh, we're gonna we're gonna hit the targets a minimum of thirty videos a month. Get people off my case then. Uh, so you've got some questions, haven't you, Cam? That you'd like to speak about? I have, mate. I've got a lot more questions. Uh, uh, topics, I think topics, because I know you you're very passionate, aren't you? So yeah, I think these are even better questions than what I had over there. I think they're. Uh, I mean, there's a lot been going on since then, aren't there? So what? what? There's a lot been going on, aren't there, since we last spoke? I mean, it was Chisora Rusek on weekend, wasn't it? Let's turn that off. Yeah, uh, Chisora Rusek. What can we say about that? I thought Rusek won. I mean, I I, I'm a, I like to look at compu, compu stats, you know, compu box stats, mate. I know we shouldn't do that because some punches can be a different velocity to other ones. But uh, Eric, the, Tony Bell, I'm going to say, Tony Bell, you said that Chisora, this is on Sky speaking to all the viewers, outscored him by three to one, but that wasn't the case, was it? No. On compu box, he won nine rounds, didn't he? They shared one. And he, he, he won two, didn't he, Chisora? If you go by CompuBox. So how how is Colwell and him saying they won? I don't get that. I know well, that... I mean, it's just pure, pure bias from Coldwell and uh, and Tony Bell, isn't it? Yeah, and Coldwell's come out on Boxing Social tonight saying, I never read it 7-5. Well, if I got that wrong, that he's saying it's 7-5, what score did he have it? Because he said he thought Derek won. Well, it, well yeah. what did he have it then if he thought he won? He'd have to win more rounds than Usyk for him to have had it. What it, what it, what it's, what it, uh, six five who won drawn. Well, who cares? But he's saying Chisora won, isn't he? And so that he yeah. won saying that as well. But my argument with it is this: they're there to give expert analysis, right? But where Red Robinson and Bean have shot themselves in for. They've got Bellew there, his mate, and Colwell, his ex-trainer, who would love to train him again because there might be chinks in armour from what everybody's saying. So they're all yeah. ho he's, he's hovering about. So they're going to be pro Derek, aren't they? But they should have put somebody in there, neutral, to relate back to fans. Froch has no to do with Chisora. What did he say? He said, Derek Chisora, is over, past, he's over ill, 10 losses, and he got beat. The best man. The, yeah. The best man won, didn't he? So and he's got ten losses, he said as well, didn't he, Carl? They never meant they don't mention out like that about the ten losses. So Coldwell, jog on with you. I'm not biased and all that. You, 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 you've got your nose in the trough like the rest of them. If you've got a problem, Dave, come see me. And you, Bell, you, you tool. But yeah, go on. 
it's fucking unacceptable and it needs to stop. You know, I've been Tony Bellew and Dave Caldwell sat ringside for a Derek Chisora fight when like there's a Cannon fucking and pandemic. Ball, aren't they? Like Cannon and Ball, aren't they? Hey. You know, there's a pandemic going on, but yet they're allowed to come and sit ringside. I mean, it's it's unacceptable. It really is. Yeah, it is, mate. I think that... Uh... I think they let themselves let, let themselves down when Tony Bellew started at Sky on pundit work and that. I thought he were a breath of fresh air and cold war, but once they get into the Bean Masons cult, they realise, hey, listen, if we need to stop here picking up free gratis, that's hotel room and board driven and picked up and money as well and profile. If they want any of that, they've got to go with script, haven't they? Yeah. You don't see De Gale cleverly, Joe Calzaghe, Gavin Reese, any of them hanging out. You know, James De Gale, George Groves cleverly, Calzaghe, Gavin Reese, Enzo Macquinelli. You don't see any of them hanging out of the back of Sky, do you? None of them. No. None of them, because they've all got a bit too much pride, haven't they? They've all got a bit too much pride about, about themselves to be hanging out at the back of them. You don't see Ricky Atten hanging out at the back of them, do you? You always see the Maybe. people who need the fix. They need to be in the circle. They need to get themselves out there. I keep turning my telly on. I keep seeing interviews with Dave Caldwell, repeating himself, going on about his score. Get over it. You want a Southern area belt, a, 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 a nondescript weight. Get over yourself. Do you know there's better trainers in the UK than your Caldwells? There's better trainers than there's him, like, Joe Gallagher. There's yeah. just trainers who go under radar who don't hang out the back of people. You don't see Sean yeah. O'Hagan hanging out at the back of people, do you? Josh Warrington's dad. You don't see Mick Whale mm -hmm. hanging out at the back of them, don't you? Do you? These are people that no. won titles with the fighters. What has Caldwell done with anybody from debut? What, who has he done anything with from debut? Oh, oh, what has he done? So I want these baby. people expert analysis. Ringside, he's giving a score saying I thought she's on a one. Within 24 hours, he's changed it to Usyk 184 because I went home and watched it on telly. Well, why don't you stay home next time? Because you're there to do a job, but you couldn't get it right. You're scoring where I you can't get any closer to it, ring. I don't want to hear that about crowds there. Do you know scoring at the side of the ring with no crowd? It's even easier for you to do your job. Have you ever seen sparring? I've seen hundreds of rounds of sparring in gyms. It's easy yeah. for the train. Do you know what Peter Fury does? He puts Yui in with uh, somebody to spar with. And Peter does the corner of the opponent who's kind of sparring Yui. And then he's looking for faults. And it's easier to do that than with thousands of people screaming. So why can't they do a pundit job? It's not rocket science, is it? But they feel that they have to go with the cult script. Am I right? What do you think? Yeah, you're right, mate. It's a fucking... It's a joke. I mean, I scored it 118, 110 to Usyk. I can see 117, 111. Pushing it 116, 112, but... I mean, two judges have got it 115, 113. Is that because, you know, you got Caldwell and Bellew screaming at ringside? Yeah, yeah well, In Tony Bellew's case, squealing. Why have, we Bellew, got, but... why have we got Sky Sports pundits screaming out of the minds next to the ring? What is all that about? Are they allowed to do that? I don't... It's not right, mate. It's not right. What it are designed to, 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 to get the win, to influence the judges? I don't know, but it's poor form from... Has Bell you come out yet and said, oh, I think I got it wrong? Has he done that yet? No, I've not seen him come out yet. No, but but Devinder has, hasn't he? Devinder Caldwell. Yeah, he's come out and gone back on himself already, what? He's one gone... day later, two days later? Yeah, he's gone from a Chisora win to an 8-4 Usyk win. Oh, my God! <laughs> Unbelievable. Does that, mean, yeah. does that mean that he were following the narrative and trying to impress and stay in the circle with, your nose in the, with his nose in the trough? Or is he an incompetent pundit? Is he incompetent? Because that's incompetence, in my opinion. Dave Cowell, that's incompetence. You're supposed to be an expert analysis. But getting back to what I've just said, 
there's trainers in this country that go under the radar that are fantastic. For example, Robin Reed does pad seminars. I've seen him do, teach people how to work pads, but he don't want to do it because he thinks that you have to be in a cult. He don't want to do it, Robin. Mm -hmm. I've seen other people, people have, what about that, uh, uh, I forgot his name, is it not Arun? The, the the Manchester kid, the Manchester kid, what's he called? Oh, oh, is he something to be part of? I'm sure you mean, mate, I can't think of you. No, not Arun. Uh, is he a pod man? Yeah, no, he's a trainer. There's a Manchester kid, he, he's a good trainer. Pat Barrett, none of them get a, a, a mention, do they? None of them get a mention, do they, who've done, who, who are working in game. There's kids who train who don't want an arse lick, who don't get a mention. It's the same, It's like trainer at Yearwick, boxing board of control, and it? it's the same old people looking after the same old boys club. And do you know what? I'm fucking tired of it, mate. I'm fucking sick to death of it. It's the same old people with the noses in the fucking trough. Do you know what I mean? And I'm swearing again. I'm going to get in trouble tomorrow. But I just don't give a fuck anymore about this. It's fucking... I'm up to here with it, mate. It's in front of our fucking eyeballs. It's no wonder I've got one of them fucking fire sticks. Do you know what I mean? I ain't <laughs> fucking getting them a bean. And if they turn it off at weekends like they do sometimes, I'll go a stream. They used to get all my money, Sky and BT. No, no fucking more. Ooh. I think BT's a bit better. They're not as biased, are they? But it's out of control, mate, and it's fucking... Boxing's got to change for better, Cam. What do you think? I think you're right, mate. There's too many pay-per-views, far too many pay-per-views. I mean, what have we had over the last, what, three or four months? Is it four pay-per-views, including Joshua Pulev? Well, he's got, he's got his six in, hasn't he, by the time he is out. He'll have had his six in, won't he? During yeah. the pandemic. That's shocking. That's shocking, that. He only got, did he get five last year? Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. Yeah, he got more in a pandemic than he did last year. Oh, wait. Be Dale Nichols, the voice of hardcore pay-per-view boxing. Can you uh, send me a, th a link? Because you're the pay-per-view man. Dale's got all figures and dates and how much it costs, <laughs> totals and that. He's a 36 or something in Eddie Earn era, but he's done 30. Six have not been out to do him. It's what Sky have bought in and that, so... I think it's six at end of year, if White fights and Joshua. And it's a liberty, isn't it? The, it's greed on a massive scale, right? And it's that bad that I think they even know it's bad now, but they've just got tunnel vision. And all the YouTubers that are hanging out at the back of them, they know they've got to push it, don't they? Or they're not going to get access, but it's bad, yeah. isn't it? I, I suppose you could say that Rob Tebbett's trying to sort of ask the right questions. But when he gets him on hook, his arsehole falls out, doesn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Rob Tebbett, your arsehole falls out once you get him on hook. Could you imagine these shithouses being interviewed by me at Boxing Asylum? We'd tear them apart, wouldn't we? Tear you apart! I've, uh, what I do want to ask you about is, what yeah. do you think about Eddie Hearn, or should I say Eddie Hills, bringing out a book called Relentless? Really is this the that. same guy? Is this not the same guy that had the business handed down to him by his dad, Bazza? What's so relentless about that? He's never done a day in stir in his life, mate. He's never had to struggle. Or <laughs> Relentless? How is he relentless? Why isn't he relentless with Kel Brook? Getting Kel Brook on, uh, <laughs> on on Sky. I mean, I mean, Kel Brook put him on map, didn't he? Why is that relentless? He's shut door in Kel's face. Well, is that relentless? Sat in a sauna, so having his dad sat in a, a sauna before his dad and Lee Purdy in sauna before they fought Devin Alexander, which is against rules, trying to drain every outside of him so they didn't get fined by uh, no, 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 New York or New Jersey State Athletic Commission or whatever the one in America. Uh, I think it went New York, so they didn't get a fine. So they're sitting in sauna, and Eddie's bragging about it on Twitter. Is that relentless? Uh, is that relentless? Oh, is that relentless having a song about you and then being cringe? Look, Eddie's the original cringing at you. It makes it about him. That, doing a podcast and interviews constantly every day with same old people going around in circles, that's not relentless. Relentless is when you're probably being bankrupt. His dad nearly went bankrupt in the early 90s, you know, and he had an heart attack. His dad is relentless. Eddie's not relentless. He had it on a plate. Yet I know that he can say, yeah, I'm a silver spoon boy, but I turned it gold, and you make most of Angie that way. But that's just a cop-out, isn't it? You, you know, we'll see how relentless he is. 
when Joshua retires and his meal ticket's gone, you'll see the true Eddie Earn then when he's going to do his shows and he's doing his conkers, as he says. Doing me conkers, cheeky Nando's, plot up. You know, all the Essex apples and pears crap that he charts. We'll see yeah. how relentless Eddie Earn... Eddie, come see me. We'll see how relentless he is then once Joshua's gone and there's no pay-per-view stars and he's trying to feed us Derek Chisora against Dylan White in a fifth fight once and for all. <laughs> and Derek's there with 12 losses, you know, like that. Like Joe Fraser talking like him. Um, yeah. And Dylan White's there. He's, he's had another loss of somebody else. And a pair of them have not won a, British, uh, a, a world title between them. And he's feeding us it, that on pay-per-view. Is that relentless? Hey, is that relentless, Eddie? Dylan White against Chisora Trilogy. Dylan, Dylan White been knocked out twice. Chisora, 10 losses. Is that relentless? 10, pe- uh, ten losses of pay-per-view. That's not relentless. That's being cheeky with fans. It's being greedy. Not relentless. It's being ruthless with money, isn't it? That's all it is. And all these casuals are buying into it. But the real boxing fans like us, we see through it. We see it, mate. He's got an, he's got an action figure out. He's got songs about him. Listen, he's got mate, a book out. No context, Earn. Listen, you know Eddie Earn, right? Do you know what his favourite saying used to be? I'm not going to say who told me this. Eddie's favourite saying used to be, you know what, Coogs? I love that Don King saying, never let the fighter be bigger than the promoter. And that's his favourite saying. And that's just like Frank Warren's favourite saying, isn't it? And we know what that is, don't we? He's got to treat fighters like mushrooms. Feed them shit and keep them in dark. And that's Eddie Earn all over. That is, mate. And it's got to change, hasn't it? It's got to change yeah. the boxing to move forward because kids are not getting out there. And it's the same old circle. I mean, look at this here. We're not a week. I mean, what day are we on here? What day is it today? Wednesday. So, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but Tuesday, wasn't it? Sunday, Monday. On Tuesday, one, two, three. Three days after Chisora got schooled, his 10th loss, Eddie Earns putting it out there for him and Dylan White. What? So, that'll be, he's going to fight on 21st against somebody who knocked him out last time. What? What? Who's looking out for Derek Chisora? Is David A looking out for him? No, he's a pimp. Is Eddie Earn looking out for him? No, he's a pimp. Is Del Boy looking out for himself? No, he's greedy. It's greedy, it's shocking, isn't it, mate? It's shocking. And I, I want to get onto that a bit later on, but they're not calling you out, yeah, is he, Dylan White or Eddie Earn? They're not going to put you in that fight, are they? Yui Fury, twenty-six year old, because he danced rings around Dylan White like he did in sparring. You know what yeah. I mean? Got an awful style for Dylan White, Yui. Eddie, you're not relentless. You got it handed to you on a plate. You've done quite well, but come on, you're not relentless. And we're sick of hearing about your favourite crisps, Eddie. <laughs> While you're at it, mind the monster wants pickled onions. <laughs> and we're sick of hearing about his caramel macchiato. What is that? Is that some fancy dish at some restaurant near his house? Uh, it's his favourite coffee. Oh yes. my God! What, 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 what have happened to uh, Nescafe? Co- well. His dad, his dad used to plug it, didn't he? Or that snooker player, the nugget. Didn't Steve interest him? Sure, plug it. Nescafe. <laughs> Don't you like Nescafe? I'm sure they must have hundreds of jars left from when Steve Davis were doing Nescafe adverts. Yeah. Jesus. What a turncoat Eddie is. Eddie, get some Nescafe down, yeah. We're on to you. Yeah, go on. What's next? <laughs> right. Dave Allen again. Oh, God. We're sick of talking about him, but... We, we can't help it when, when he's coming out with stuff like this. Dave Allen, oh um, my God. You mean Dave Allen, who were nearly world ranked 15? <laughs> yeah. The White Rhino, the Doncaster De La Hoya, Dave Allen, yeah. David Allen, oh my God. Has he won a belt yet, Dave? He's not won a belt, but tell me what you think about this. He's come out on IFL, in his recent IFL interview, and he said that there's only, there's only him and Tyson Fury that know how to beat Usyk. Him what do you think Tyson about him? Well, him Tyson, well, Tyson Fury's not sparred, Usyk. And as regards nope. <coughs> Dave Allen, he got punched all over him if it's a week or a week. So, I don't, what, what's he coming out with? How does he know how to beat Usyk? He might know how to beat him, but he can't do it. 
I don't, I don't, I don't know. Are people just saying things for for are people saying things to talk shit? People just chatting utter shit. Is that what it is? Shit chatters. You just try to keep his name out there and keep relevant, Nick, because he's not a fight. To... I might listen, mate. He's just not two fights back, but he said he'd fight a guy who who were a journeyman, two wins and. I don't know whether it were 45 or 60 losses because there's just two conflicting reports, isn't there? But yeah, just not Villali back 17 3 and 1 and Mark Bennett 8 and 1. So he can't go around <laughs> complaining that he didn't get a fight, can he? What's his three best wins, Dave Allen, Russ? Three best wins Lucas Brown, Nick Webb, and um, Bracamante. And he reckons he knows how to beat Usyk. Yeah. Dave, it's fucking embarrassing. Talking. You've got to stop. Dave, you're talking <laughs> dog milk, but you're funny. He is funny, Dave, but... Listen, he's... Used to think he's funny. Flagged it. Good luck to him. Yeah, I, I used to think you were funny, but it's... Uh, it's a bit just a bit... Of joke, isn't it? Is it wearing a bit of thing, kid? Yeah, what, what do you think about <laughs> Alexander Povetkin testing positive for COVID? Do you think it's... You know, three weeks out from fight, is it a coincidence or, you know, what's going on there? Well, I think that he's that old, they can't get him out there that quick again. And I think it, that's what I think. I think they've looked at it and thought, you know what? We're going to struggle here. We're going to struggle here because his body will need time to adjust, won't it? 40, well, he's in his 42nd year, him. Yeah. Tell them why it's got nine years on him, I know about that. So he can't just fight at that level and then come out straight away and fight again a couple of months later. Three, it's less than three months later. Is it two, two months and 20 days or something later, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you, you said that fight won't happen and, again, it looks like you're right, doesn't it? Listen, mate, I've got crystal ball here, mate. And I, I'll tell you another thing as well. Did I say it be Caballel? Uh, I can't remember, mate. Did but... on here? I, did, I said it on here, Caballel. Yeah. I just thought it'd be Caballel because he's undefeated and they could sell it off. Well, Derek Chisora has just been in a pay-per-view and Derek lost when he were fresher to Caballel on Sky mm. Sports. So nobody would have been able to throw mud at Tyson for fighting Caballel because it's a defence, a voluntary, and they get the, the gear, they want a safe fight, don't they, so they can get the Joshua fight on all Wilder. But... Yeah. It's an easy win for Tyson that he'll take him to school. He's, his IQ's up there with U6, isn't it, Tyson's, as regards skills and defence. But and he's added attack now, and to his game. But I was right about that, and I'm right about the Pavet King White, and I'm right about Cabo. There's a lot I am not right on because a lot of people give me a bit of misinformation to try and make me look daft, don't they? But I tend to sift through it, do you know what I mean, and double check. But it is what it is. So what do we reckon about who should step in then to fight Dillian White? Do you reckon because Michael Hunter's quite and said that he'll fight for free? I don't know what you think about that. I think that's a bit that's silly. Not pay-per-view, pay-per-view. Is it White again? White needs a dance partner for pay per view. They couldn't put Hunter in there and it'd be pay per view. No chance. If they put about- Hunter in with in with hang on a second, if they put Hunter in with White, that means White's now a guaranteed pay per view guy, whoever he fights, isn't it? Yep. Oh, no, they can't do that. They can't mm. put Hunter in with him. Well, the, uh, the, they put White against oh. Rivas on pay-per-view, didn't they? Hey, eh? they, they had White against Rivas on pay-per-view. They had who? Dillian White against Oscar Rivas. That were on pay-per-view, wasn't it? Were it? Yeah. Well, yeah that was pay-per-view. Look at it, right? Oscar Rivas. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah, I suppose so. They could put Hunter in, couldn't yeah. they? They'd get they away could, with it, they? <laughs> Definitely. They get away with it because they're that cheeky, aren't they? What about Huey Fury? Eh? What about Huey Fury stepping in and fighting Dillian White? Yeah, I've just said that earlier. They're not, they'll not do that. Huey Styles, they've sparred, aren't they? And he couldn't get near Huey. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Huey put it in reverse, didn't he, for a few rounds and fried his head a bit and then did all them f- slick foot movement things that he does. Huey's hard to nail, you know. Huey's never been down as, him, as a pro. I know I get sticking that, don't I, for backing him. But, you know, when you tend to watch people train and spar and you've seen a lot of it, you tend to think they're good, don't you, I suppose. So maybe there's a bit of bias for me there. But I just think you is good. He's only 26 as well, don't forget. 
Yeah, I think I think we all like Huey and his, his style and that, but we just want to see him come forward a bit more. You know, technically he's brilliant and throw some right yeah. hands. I want to see. Yeah, that's what we want to see, mate. Throw a few more right hands, but I'd love to see him in there with Dylan White. I think he, he probably beats him on points, doesn't he? Well, you know, when Tyson were 26 and Yui were 26, you could really say that they were about at the same level, couldn't you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because Tyson didn't win belt, did he, till he were 20, 27. 27 and four, three months or something. Yui's 26 and one month. So, so basically, Yui's got another 15 months to get to that level that Tyson's at. So that it's going to be now when Yui kicks on now. So people need to forget them three losses he's got because there's a story behind each one. And, uh, and to get behind him instead of, you know, having a good in just because he's not a self-promoter like Tyson or Bellew and that. Get behind him. That's what I think, anyway. So, so who would you like to see step in and, and fight Dylan White? I'd like to see Yui get a pay per view. I think he deserves it, but they won't give it because his style's all wrong for Dylan. Yeah. Oh. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But what do you think of all this talk about White Chisora three? I mean, why do we need to see that? It's garbage, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, what what's going on there? First fight, lost fight, could have probably gone either way. Second fight, you know, he's knocked him out in 11th round, spark out. We don't need to see it again, do we, for a third time? Uh, no, we don't. But they're, they're gonna, somebody's going to get hurt, you know, with all this kamikaze matchmaking, you know. Somebody's going to... Eddie Hearn's already had a death on one of his shows. We know that, don't we? 100%, mate, I agree with you there. Someone's going to end up getting hurt, yeah. Yeah, somebody's going to get hurt. I don't know who. I touch wood, I hope it doesn't happen. But uh, somebody's going to gonna end up getting a Derek Chisora. He can't go through what he's just been through. He had a bloodshot eye and everything. I know he didn't get knocked out, but he got peppered, didn't he? He had yeah. a bloodshot eye and sunglasses on straight after the fight. Now, let me tell you this. If Derek Chisora fights White, White's a lot fresher and he'll beat him. What if he gets hurt? He, gets, he got laid out last time against him. And he'll be going into this fight now a lot older than when they last fought and coming off yeah. at a 12-round schooling. So... Do you know what I mean? I don't want to hear David A pimping him out like that. It was awful to see that. Do you know David A? Any ounce of respect I had for David A went when I saw that. Any ounce of respect I had for him went. He, he's just ruthless. He's just like Eddie. Maybe maybe yeah. they have to have that in him to be to do what they do, but he ain't got Chisora's best interests at heart. And probably Chisora knows it as well, but he's just going to run with it, isn't he? So what we're saying then, we don't want to see it, do we? White Chisora 3. We fuck. I don't want to see it. But if it's on, it's on. What can we do? But I don't want to see that. No, I don't want to see it. I want to see... They're going to have to get somebody else in our moot date. Simple as that. You know this War Chisora stuff? I mentioned it the other day, but he copied it off Marvin Hagler, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Marvin Hagler had it on the art, didn't he, before he fought uh, Tommy Earns. So you were coming out with this, what, 20, 30 years ago? Oh, 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 what it, what it, Ray Leonard fight. I don't know, he had a red hat, didn't he, that said war on. They, they've copied that down to a T, haven't they? I think he were Ray Leonard fight, 87. Uh, mm. Yeah, of course they have. Yeah, Dave Allen's got it tattooed on his chest. Yeah, but he, he has, yeah. I didn't see any wars when he fought Price. So I don't know why, why no. people, I mean... Chisora Sided, can take that off at any time, can't he? But Dave can't take his tattoo, tattoo off, can he? So, do you know what I mean? But, uh, two seconds, let me just sort my uh, kids out. Two seconds. All right, man. Ruby, thank you. Quay Rocky, one in. Go. <sighs> Sorry about that. Oh, got my kids on. Got it, yeah. Yeah, so Quay Rocky, say hello. Oh, they're not speaking to me. Yeah, so uh, I don't, I don't want to see it, man. I don't, I don't want to see uh, Derek Chisora White. I don't want to see Derek get his head punched in and take a fight. Hmm. 
in, in, uh, inside free week from fighting another pay-per-view. It's never been done before. Did you see Eddie Hearn in his interview? Yeah, we could do something that's never been done before. We could put Chisora. You, you could do it, Derek. You could do something that, uh, that's never been done before. Two pay-per-views inside 20 days. Three inside 21 days. But do, does he even know what he's saying when he says things like that? What? That's craziness, isn't it? Is that crazy? He's just been punched all over by an heavyweight for 12 rounds. But it's okay. We're going to wheel you out again in three weeks. Whatever happened to 28-day ban, man, oh, that's only for a knockout, isn't it? But taking all that punishment yeah. there, he was nearly knocked out in round seven, wasn't he? And then he took more punishment for round eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Bell, Bell saved him in seventh. But he wants to wheel him out 21 days later. I mean, it's not as if he's just had a sparring session. There were no headgear on, were there? I mean, we're, this is this is Eddie Hills, the 4-0 and super heavyweight amateur star, star, free by way of. You know, who's supposed to know he's boxing. Eddie, fuck you. Yeah, go on. While we're on the subject, what we're saying about David A, is he downright deluded, greedy, or greedy. both? Greedy and he can't manage his money, can he? He goes through money like water. He's greedy, mate. He's a greedy man and he's got no feelings for, for boxers. I mean, I'm not going to say which boxer, but I, I've heard stories about people on his shows and they were paid pittances, mate. Pittances. While he walked off with all cake, you know, headline, headline that. Pittances yeah. mate, when he were a maker. And that's why a maker folded. Nobody wanted to work with him, mate, because they were paying out poor money. And now he's in a, a situation where a few years ago he was slagging Eddie Earn off. He was going to take all his fighters off him and ruin him. Now he's hanging out of the back of him. And nobody's saying a word. Yeah. Hanging out of the back of him. These people have got no pride. David A., you've got no pride. Have some pride. Be a man. Don't be a pimp or a whore. I mean, Derek Chisora is 37 next month for us. He's got 10 losses and he's still trying to flog him on pay-per-view. Were you saying that he gets 25% of every fight? Yeah, he'll be, he'll be on something like that, won't he, manager, won't he? Yeah, uh, he'll something like that. That's the only reason he's doing it, isn't it? He? he don't give a shit about Derek Chisora's health, does he? He's not bothered. He just wants that percentage and, and that's all he's bothered about. It's disgusting, isn't it? He'll, well, he'll have a list of fighters... Right, just like we go through in our scenarios, he'll be thinking we'll get Dylan White one, and then after that one, Sky will not have it if he loses that one, and then he'll be thinking, well, there isn't really anybody left to fight here, uh, so then he'll go over to Frank because he's got both his feet, he's got his feet in BT Sport Camp as well, and he hey, because he's a yeah, he has been funded, isn't he? So he'll he'll jump in bed bed with brick top then, and there'll be Debar. Gorman, Debar, Joyce, they'll both beat Chisora. Gorman, he'll be right coming up while Chisora's going down. That could be a cross with us fight, which they'll sell it as. So he's looking at one more with Sky and one more pay-per-view and three, what, three fights, definite. I don't know if they'll be pay-per-view. I don't know. It depends on criteria at BT. They don't do as many pay-per-view as Sky. David A will be thinking four more fights with Chisora, good paydays. And then I'll jump in with mm. Dana White and MMA him, let him get knocked about there and get paid. It's a business. It's a business. Box combat. And then he'll say combat sports is a business. And that's that. He'll sell the arse of it on all his social media platforms. And De poor old Derek Chisora will be do, 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 dribbling when he's eating his porridge in the morning. Do you know what I mean? In another two, three year. And it's sad yeah. to see. But it's happening in front of our eyeballs. These people are whores and they are trying to pimp out Chisora. Eddie Earn and David Day are trying to pimp him out for a fight against a guy who is supposedly most dangerous left duck in boxing. Who left him for dead on canvas in last fight. We'll put him in with him three weeks later. It's okay. You'll get paid. It's pay-per-view money. You'll beat Dylan. He's just had a loss to Povetkin. We'll hype it up. We'll create some intense beef. And we'll maybe get Dillian to have a bit of beef with Coogan this time just to get get it out there and we'll all be in it together because we're a cult. We're the Bean Masons. It's like people are forgetting that 
He got knocked out, like we just said, two year, not even two years ago by Dylan White. Knock, knock Spark out. Tyson Fury stopped him in, what, 10 rounds as a southpaw? Yeah. But he beat the shit out of him. What was that, six years ago? Yeah. And in 2012, David A knocked him out, didn't he, in five rounds? So. Caballel uh, He's everyone in forgetting that. Eh? Hey? Yeah. Yeah, he did, yeah. Yeah. So, it's shocking. Shocking, mate. Moving on. Anyway. Recycle garbage, isn't it? Recycle rubbish, but I've been saying that for the last three years, but it's only now that people are starting to say, Bucky, you was right, I was wrong. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What do you think of all these media outlets in boxing, mate? Like IFL, Boxing Social, Behind the Gloves. More, more to do with IFL, really, in Boxing Social. What do you think of them constantly interviewing the same 20, 25 people in boxing? And nobody else. It's because they do the views and they're in it for money. And another thing as well, what I don't like about them channels is that they keep putting the same video up. When Eddie Earn does an Insta video, they both share it, don't they? I've noticed. Have you noticed that? I find myself yeah. watching it twice because I like to keep I like to be Mr. Current Affairs. I thought I've just seen that. It's the same thing on that. And then I check that both there might be like one minute, 38 seconds, and then it's the same on other. And I think, oh, they must be sharing stuff. I don't agree with that. Like, it's a bit cringe. But what they do is very hard. Uh, Coogan's very good behind camera, but he doesn't ask the right questions. But he's very comfortable asking them. The other kid thinks he's so, they call him the hardcore, hardcore, don't they, Rob Tebbert? Rob, I don't like you. I think you're an arse licker. And my mate Terry Chapman's armor don't like you, so I don't like you. But point I want to make is I've got no time for arse lickers. Now, Rob Tebbett does ask good questions every now and then, but once he gets them hot and flustered, he leaves it. He leaves it like that. Could you imagine him chatting a bird up, Rob Tebbett, and get, getting her back to the bedroom, and, 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 then, and then she's all ready and she jumps in bed and he's like, oh, I've got Ooh. work in the morning, and he goes home. He reminds me of that type of guy when he's doing an interview. Do you know what I yeah. mean? He like, gets them on hook and you're like, go on, Rob, go on, Rob. And then all of a sudden, pfft, apple crumble. Do you know what I mean? But Coogan, Coogan lets yeah. his sense down because he takes stuff off this channel, doesn't he, that makes it embarrassing for Matchroom. And other fighters will say, take that down, or disable comments. He disables yeah. comments, doesn't he, all the time, on videos where people say, oh, disable comments. I've had people ring up and say, Take that disabled comments thing down. Well, all I have to do is make a phone call and get it took down. If I want to do, I can. And I always say, no, because if I do it for you, I've got to do it for everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I've hammered Dennis in videos before. And still, I've heard you've hammered me in a weapon video. So, I'm, yeah, I'm not taking it down then. Do you know what I mean? Because if I take it down for you, I've got to take it for everybody. Peter Fury. He were at one, he were at one at Elmer at Month on in rankings. Uh, I went yep. To see him for Peter's going through to see Peter. Aren't you? So, yeah, I went through M62. I thought, oh god, I hope this is gonna go down well. And he went, You've uh, put me in helmets, aren't you? I went, Yeah, he went, All oh, right, well, fair dues, like you know what I mean. And he, and he <laughs> and I said to him, Do you want to do an entrance for my videos? He went, Yeah, did like an intro thing for me. And he was all right about yeah. it. I says, After I says, You all right about it, Peter? He went, Yeah, I don't give a shit. If I'm in it, I'm in it, aren't I? If I've had votes, what are we going to do? If you don't put me in, you've got to take other people out. So if they get the votes in helmets, they're in. We've cut it down from 30 to 10, though, now. So it's too time-consuming and too expensive to do. But So it's the top 10 helmets every month now. But uh, right. but Coogan disables comments, doesn't he? I don't like that. He disabled it on quite a few of it years. I don't like that, but he's an hard worker and he's... He's really nice to talk to. Like he's a nice enough young kid, but I don't like him disabling comments, and I don't like it when he lets Eddie and run right in interviews. He don't he don't press he don't press enough for my liking. But I understand that he ne he needs access, doesn't he? And Eddie and there's people queuing up to do what he does because boxing is the wild wild west. The, the people are not bothered. Do you know Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I think I think that IFL and them sort of channels, they, they used to be a platform for, you know, like unknown boxers to get themselves out there. But nowadays, it just seems like they're a platform for Eddie Hill's bullshit, doesn't it? 
Eddie Hill. Yeah, let's call him Eddie Hill from now on. Yeah, Eddie Hill. Uh, well, look, all it is is it's Eddie promoting his book on IFL, isn't it? Coogan yeah. could be spending time with kids uh, who are two and out. Novice yep. fighters who want to get a bit of a profile, going in, going in an interview with them and getting like a thousand views on his channel, or getting as much views as I do on my channel, on 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 my videos, but getting them out there instead of me hammering them for not what what they're doing. You know what I mean? Because sometimes I can go off key and, and it gets me that riled up, and then I think, God, all hours have gone in day because it does cheese me off what's going on. Do you know what? Do you know? Do you know what? Right? Do you know when Eddie Hearn came on the scene? He were a breath of fresh air, and I were, I thought he was brilliant. Right? I, th I thought he, he were really yeah. good. But as as it's gone on, when, I'm not saying this because Froch is a big pal of mine. When Carl Froch had his last fight in 2014, they had to bring Joshua on. They had no choice. When Joshua fought Vladimir, right after that, I thought boxing were going to kick on and be massive. What has it done since then? It's gone downhill, hasn't it? Yeah. It's gone downhill and you've got... And, and everybody's had the noses in the trough wanting it to be like that all the time and it ain't like that boxing. It is, it's landscape change. Dennis always used to say to me, look, the landscape changes all the time. So don't go flying off Andal and or upsetting anybody at the show tonight, any board members or... Oh, it will change the landscape he always used to say that well when when's it going to change because it don't look like it to me it's just getting worse yeah the, the diluting the sport and I, personally i think that the building towards doing a women's pay-per-view that's what i think i reckon katie taylor will be a main event on a pay-per-view no, next no. year i reckon it'll be savannah marshall against clarissa shields because that's biggest fight in women's boxing at the moment it's two pugilists who can, who can fight it's too pure. Yeah, it could be that, but I think they're definitely building towards a you know women's pay per view. Hundred percent. Two seconds. I'll put this. Uh... So that, that's that's all. That's what I want to see. I want to see proper fights. Savannah Marshall against Clar Clarissa Shields. I can get behind that. All this other garbage that mm. I'm seeing, I can't get behind. All of it, because Katie Taylor, no no judge is going to back against her because she's got a country behind her. So you can forget that. And I don't want to see her anyway. She's about as dull as a plank of wood. All the rest of them, non, not interested in any of them. Not interested in any of them. I'm interested in Savannah Marshall, Clarissa Shields. Not interested in any of the others. None. They're all garbage, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, Katie Taylor's not garbage, is she? But she's got a country behind her, and I thought she lost two fights already. But I want to see Savannah's Marshall, Clarissa Shields. She gets pay per view. We're all going to scream Bill Murder, but I'll be happy for her. But it won't be right. It won't make it right, will it? But I hope she does get paid well. But as regards yeah. women's boxing, well, they're getting world title fights after eight fights. So. Yeah, I look forward to that fight. Savannah Marshall against Clarissa Shields. Yeah. I don't know about pay per view, but, you know, I'd. Uh... I'd certainly watch that. Yeah. That fight. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But what do you think about that video of uh, Chisora and Coogan when, when Chisora stuck it on him? Do you think put it's up job. Put up job. Yeah. If it ain't a put up job and that were me and that was somebody speaking to me like that on my channel when I'm in an hotel room with him, do you think I put that video out? No. There you go. Even if it did. 250,000 views, which is what? He's on Premier Ads. 250,000 views for him on Premier Ads, what he's on, will be, I don't know, 800 quid, 700, 800 quid. Would I do? I won't do that for that, no. So he's either hoard himself out or he's let them, by letting them speak to him like shit and still putting it out, or he's in on it. Either way. He's out of order, isn't he, Coogan? Why would you let yeah. someone speak to you like that and then put it out? So it's got a bit fuck views and money. Or you're in on it and you're letting them speak to you like that to help the show because Eddie said, look, we're going to have to create something a bit controversially to try and get 
a few more buys here. You know, Derek's ready to... Because we, we were all waiting for Derek to let rip, weren't we? He turned up dressed as a white man with war on his chest, didn't he? Or paint on his centre summer. He usually flips the table, spits on him, rolls on the floor, turns up covered it like a cartoon character, like a clown, or he does a controversial video. It's one of them. He, he has to steal the show, doesn't he? And that was the stealing of the show for, for the YouTubers, wasn't it? But only one YouTuber got that, didn't he? That was Coogan, wasn't it? Yeah. He's got the access, but moving on from moving on from them anyway. Let's uh, move forward with, with another subject. Oh. Yeah, no worries, mate. But oh, what, what just, I just want to touch on some of the, the Usyk said. Usyk said that he thought they were an inside job against him. You know, we were talking about Tony Bellew and Dave Caldwell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Screaming and trying to put judges off, but they didn't fall for it, did they? This is why judges should be in a booth and not sat ringside. Do you agree with what, what he says, then, Usyk, that he well, reckons they're inside were, again, Yeah, I agree. I know somebody who were there, and Bellew were jumping up and down like a lunatic. Yeah. Jumping up. And other one were going, come on, Derek, no, Derek, no, no, inside, Derek, no, no. You know, Caldwell, I could hear him. He were annoying me. I was listening to Daz's own stream, though, wasn't I? So, but I could hear him in the background. And, and other, uh, Bell, you were screaming. It were embarrassing. And other people that were there were embarrassed as well. So, what were Caldwell shouting? Don't get greedy. Don't get greedy. Don't get greedy, Derek. No, no, Derek. No. <laughs> well, what, what, what about his trainers in corner? That's not giving them any, any respect, is it? Hey, do you know what I mean? No, I, I agree. I agree with you, Sick. I think they're an inside job against him to sway the judges towards Derek Chisora. And I think it worked because you saw two 115, 113 cards, and that were never a 115, 113 fight, were it? Hang on a second, I think my car alarm's going off. Two seconds. No, it could is. be Steffi Bull. <sighs> Steffi won't come near me, he knows what he'll get. He won't be able to handle <laughs> these shots off me, Steffi. Have you ever seen him fight? He won't be able to handle me, mate. I'm just taking I've, uh, I've been. I've seen one of his fights in it against Amir Khan, and uh, it, didn't, it didn't last that long, did it? No, 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 no. Listen, mate, I'm not going to box him when I see him. I'm just going to take him down and choke him out like the little rat that he is. Isn't that right, Steffi? Come see me. So, yeah. But like I said, one one more round to Chisora on, on both of them judges' cards and you're looking at a draw. And I mean, mm. you know, I thought Usyk, I wouldn't say schooled him, but I thought he clearly won the fight. You know what I mean? Massive win. I mean, what what did Bell you have him up after six rounds? Five one. What are they watching? Six rounds gone and he's five one up. Well, why didn't Derek get on back foot? If he were five one up after six rounds, he could have gone on yeah. back foot and stayed out of trouble, couldn't he? Made it hard for Usyk. Yeah, right. he could have. He could have done a James De Gale and Cruz for the last six rounds, couldn't he? I mean, we've yeah. got Penfold and the disappearing man. Best mates, which is Aura, as ringside pundits. Who's making these decisions for quality control here? Who's making these decisions? I've been told it's Ed Robinson. So, Ed Robinson, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're supposed to be a boxing man. Hey, are you part of Bean Mason Court? What are you doing, Ed? What's happening? Come see me. Yeah, go on. Yeah, last thing that I want to talk about, mate, and you might not even want to talk about it, I'm not sure, but what do you think about Lamar Scott, I'm sure that's his name, a.k.a. Dean White, what walking around with him. I've never, him. Met him. I've never met him. What What do you think's worse? The fact that he's walking around calling himself Dean White or the fact that people are actually going along with it, what's worse? Well, that's not his name, is it? It's not his name, mate, no. But what I don't what do you think's worse? I don't, it'd be like me calling me saying... Uh, Fred Frotch or something, wasn't it? Yeah. Or or, or, or Joe Frotch, or, or calling me some Paul Obson, something like that. It'd be a bit cringy. Or, or Johnny Whale or something like that. This is Josh Whale, my brother, I'm Johnny Whale. This is Gwyn Whale. We're, we're the whales. This is my father, Mick. I don't know. I, I think it's all a, all a bit bizarre, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. Maybe mm -hmm. the good mate, look, that's how I look at it, right? We, 
he's a he's a young lad, isn't it? But look, they could be mates, really good mates, and they could have got stoned out the brains one night on some really good cush, you know, some really good. Yeah. Cush. And he could have said, "Bro, you like my bro," and he's gonna say, "I'm your bro, bro." You know, talking all that shit that they talk. And they could have yeah. they could have decided there and then that the brothers, and that might have been it for him. He might have just gone off and changed his name by depot. I don't know, but I find it bizarre. But I don't like people coming in my company who, who, who say, oh, this is... I said, who's that, your mate? No, he's my cousin. I said, no fucking relation. Yeah, but he's like my cousin. I don't have any of that in my company. I didn't like any mm. of that when I were in jail. And I didn't like... I'll tell you two things I didn't like in jail. People saying that they're a relative and they're fucking not. And other thing were people walking around with the jeans hanging around the fucking knees, mate, with the boxer shorts showing. I don't like anything like that in my company in jail. And none of the people that I used to play poker with every day in there on landings and people I used to have it with in there, I, they didn't like any of that. I don't like shit like that, disrespectful stuff. Or people talking out of turn in my company. So as long as they don't come in my company saying he's my brother from another mother or he's my, he's my bro, he's my bro, he's my bro. And when the, I don't like any of that, mate. But if he wants to go around carrying off like that and telling people he's saving aeroplanes at 35,000 feet and, and, and inventing knackers up to get his son out there, good luck to him, but it's not, not for me. I, I couldn't do that. I know a lot of people in boxing industry and, and they think he's a bit of a clown, mate. They think he's a bit of a clown. But the thing is, you see, none of them will say it to his face because he's a big six, six foot eight black fellow, isn't he? With big hands like shovel. Yeah. He wouldn't really bother me, mate. All these big gangster people who come into boxing, this is how I look at it, right? How are they getting visas to go to America, the big gangsters? It's bullshit, mate. It's just bluff and counter bluff. And, you know, yeah, I agree with you. I've seen it all, mate, in, in my fucking near six year fucking close up look at it. So now it's a load of bollocks, mate. I don't have people chatting bollocks in my company. But if he wants to say he's called Dean White, fucking go on. Good luck to him. But I don't know. I mean, fucking hell. <laughs> I'd love to see him come and park his corner or even IFL or I'd boxing. So here, mate. I'd tear him apart on here. So what, why are you running around telling people that you're called Dean White and you're Dylan White's brother? You know, Dylan White was born in Jamaica. You, you're, you're from London. How the fuck are you Dean White's brother? That's what I'd say to him. Why are you doing that and embarrassing the sport of boxing? That's what I'd say. Yeah. But like I said, if he feels comfortable in his own skin doing that, fair enough. But as far as I'm concerned, he's a fucking joker, mate. Dean White, you're a joker. Come see me. So, yeah, go on. Do you think that, do you think that Coogan's under pressure to interview him in case uh, you know he might lose access to Dillian White you know, if he stops Coogan, interviewing him? Coogan's not going to interview him. Why well, he's not going to interview him and ask him what I'd ask him, is he? They're going to go, how's it going, Dean? All right. Oh, here we are. Uh, it's Andy Scott here at Sky, Box, uh, Sky Sports Boxing, and we're joined by Dean White. They all know that that ain't his name, but if he wants to call it, he might want to call his son uh, Joe Startemotor. Here, it's, it's Andy Scott here, and we're joined here on Sky Sports with Joe Start the Motor. Joe Start uh, <laughs> What did you think to the fight, Joe? Well, you know, uh, Derek, re re he did really well. And, and you know, but look, it can be Joe Startemoto, Fred Blow, Stan, Stan Smith, uh, uh, Dean White, Lamar Scott. It can be anybody. Yeah, Joe blogs the lot, mate. But I don't know. He does talk a bit of sense, actually, in some of his interviews now regarding boxing. But, Dean, sort your sense out, mate. Just come out and say, look... I got. I were really good mates with Dillian, and, and 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 we were like brothers. But I'm not his brother. And then you'll get a bit of respect. But once you tell a lie, you got to tell another. You got to keep it going. A bit like Tyson Fury, in it with seven million to charity, in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite similar to that. But I just think that they're all under pressure to keep interviewing him and keep calling him Dean White because if if not, Dillian White would just say, right, well, you're not interviewing me then. Listen, mate, they're taking piss when they walk away in production vans, driving up motor with lads. Fucking hell, did you hear him? Making out his Dylan's, Dylan, Dylan, uh, White, Dylan White's brother. And they'll go, yeah, I know what a fucking plant, plant pot. 
That's what they'll say, mate. What a plant pot. But they've got to do the jobs, haven't they, and put up with it. So it's just part and parcel of business, isn't it? You know what I mean? But Dean White, whatever you call, get your passport out, birth certificate. Let's have a look at it, mate. And I'll get mine out, and I'll show you what a proper passport, well, an, an old passport and a proper looks like, proper somebody's name and birth certificate. So it is what it is, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. He's, he's obviously just trying to promote his management company, anyway, which is fair enough. But what, Black Box Management? Do, he's not do, even got a board licence, has he? You know, he's got no board licence, but he's got Black Box Management. What's all that about? He ain't got a board licence, so how's he managing fighters? How is he stood in the ring after these shots? How is he in the ring at your call, right, after the fight? If you don't have a laminate, you can't go in the ring. So when I see him in the ring at these shows, I think, well, who's not doing the job with board? Because they're frightened to search him because he's a big fella, isn't he? But you see, us yeah, a bit, it, us it, a bit yeah. off up here, we're not bothered about things like that. We're just, well, you're not allowed in the ring, mate. Get out, you can go a laminate, and that's it. But down yeah. there, it's a bit different, isn't it? Because everybody's frightened to fucking death of everybody, aren't they? Oh, he's a big black fella, he might shoot me. Who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? They fuck all to me, them down there. Stick to the rules. Dean White, go get you a license. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy, isn't it? Walking around pretending you're someone else. It's uh, it's like Johnny Nelson calling himself Bob the Builder, isn't it? Or uh, <laughs> Johnny you know. Nelson, Bob the Bullshit, huh? It's like him calling himself Nazi Mingle. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just like what's going on? What is what the fuck is going on? Mick Ennis he said it a few years ago, didn't he? What did he what say? What the fuck's going on? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, what the fuck is going on? Yeah, well, Mick's not daft, is he? He's seen it and done it, Mick. And he's one of yeah. the good guys, Mick Hennessy. But like I said, it is what it is, isn't it? So... Just be real, like Mark Tibbs. That's all I've got to say. Listen, mate, do you think Mark Tibbs has got any time for them, Mark? No. you just got to keep it real, haven't you? Yeah, you got to keep it real. So it is what it isn't. Hmm. Is that it then, kid? Yeah. That's it, mate. That's it. It's now five to nine. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this out tomorrow. And yeah. You can, I've, there's two videos gone out today, and I don't want to want to spoil them. You know what I mean? Because it's a lot of messing about. I, I could get this up with it next hour, though. It, it means finding a thumbnail and all this and that and blah, blah, blah. So what I'll do, I'll get it out, and I'll premiere it for tomorrow. And it, it's something to look, for, to look forward to for, for boxing fans, isn't it? Just a bit of straight talk. If anybody right, has a problem with anything that I've said on here, I don't give a fuck. All right. Nobody seems to fucking want to challenge me on here with anything I say because we speak the truth and we say things that nobody, no other YouTuber, no Gareth fucking A. Davis, Ron Lewis, any of you are slickers in media, dare say fuck all. All right. This is going on in front of your fucking eyeballs. All right. So if you've got a fucking problem, get to fuck. That's how I feel about boxing today. And I'm only saying what people fucking say in the industry, but I'm willing to say it on camera and fucking back it up. But none of these other shit houses will, will they? So, all right. All right, then, Cameron. Listen, thanks yeah. for coming on, you gentleman. Nice one. I'll chat to you in a bit, Ross, yeah? All right, you take care, mate. Cheers. Bye. Right. Bye-bye. Right. 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 Uh, I enjoyed that blowing a bit of steam off. Was, what, what happens in boxing is you hear that much bullshit, it can affect you, can't it? And like I said, there's fucking that much shit about it, isn't there? And bullshit, I mean, utter rubbish being fed rubbish on a fucking daily basis. I just get we just I, I, having, have enough of it, man. I just fucking have enough of it, mate. It's just it's just rubbish. We just want to see some transparency. We don't want people walking around reckon, calling themselves Coco the Clown and things like that when they're not called Coco the Clown. We want to see fighters get into top 15 on merit. We don't want to see some guy who's been fighting puddings get a world ranking at top 15, top 15 ranking and then and try and smuggle him into England so they can get some of this ranking to get somebody a title shot and an easy win. We want to see it done fairly. We don't want to see all these fucking shithouses taking piss out at fans constantly. That's how I look at it anyway. And like I said, I'm only saying what everybody thinks. We've got no knackers to say out. 
Go on, peace.